Senator Hall, do you have comments before we go to the committee? Um, only that I'm uh, very sensitive to all those that are hurting through this. Um, uh, the expansion, uh, I think, to medical cannabis is, uh, is something that will come. And uh, I certainly would be open to other people having bills like this that would do that. Uh, this bill is going to stick with the perimeters that we've given our stakeholders on it. So if I could ask my uh, uh, lobbyist to come back up, help me answer any questions. Um, okay. And uh, we have a list. Senator Jensen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I've got two questions and a, a comment. I'll start with the first question, and then I'll do follow-up, please. Senator Hall, thank you for the courage, and I would say thank you to the chair of this committee as well for this, um, this hearing for this bill. I appreciate it. Senator Hall, do you know, do your co-authors support this bill as it was submitted on February 11, 2019, Senate File 1070? As far as I know, They yes. support this bill? Yep. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Um, then going on. So we want to allow <clears throat> medical cannabis to be brought onto school grounds. And we're saying that, I think Mel Dr. Melanie Johnson said that the bill would allow nurses who, a school nurses who regularly dispense a similar medication. And that sort of jumped out at me because we still classify uh, THC as a Schedule One drug. And medical cannabis, as you know, is a kind of cannabis that has THC in it. So I'm confused by her testimony, but when I looked through your bill, I couldn't see that. So I think that it's a likelihood that the school nurse that might serve as a, I think in your amendment it says, a designated caregiver. I'm going to guess that that person probably doesn't have experience whereby he or she would regularly dispense a similar medication because she probably has, he or she has probably never dispensed a Schedule One drug. So I think that's technically a problem, and I think that can be worked through. When Mr. Lehman brought this bill to me, and uh, I said at that time that I really felt like the school piece, the bringing THC onto a school ground was the part of the bill that really made me nervous. When I look at some of the operational details in terms of what's going on in the industry as it is today, in terms of manufacturer requirements, uh, the distribution. I, I could see th the reasoning for that. But I'm just, and then it also on section 8.13, you have, this section does not apply to a school district if the school district loses federal funding. I guess that's a question I'd like to answer too is why would a school district potentially lose federal funding unless this bill is, if you will, cutting new ground? So I guess to turn the floor over to others who want to ask questions, and that the school premise really makes me nervous. The fact that a school district could potentially lose federal funding as a result of implementing this section makes me nervous. And I think, Senator Hall, I think we owe Senator Franzen a note of appreciation for having already brought to this place of law her bill, which said we have to start having the conversation. And I so appreciate your willingness, your co-author's willingness, Senators Dibble, Marty, Pratt, and Benson, their support, and the, ch and the, ch and the, the chairs willingness to courageously put this forward because I don't mind telling you medical marijuana and recreational marijuana and the whole darn topic has made my life pretty darn busy the last six weeks and so the fact that we're continuing to discuss this is I think demonstrative of the kind of courage 
that we're working with. So thank you very much. And if you'd be willing to address why would a school district lose federal funding and is bringing THC onto a setting like this really necessary? And I guess the third question I would ask is, what's the frequency of dosing? Because I think a lot of times we fall into the trap of bringing medication to school when it's only a twice a day medicine. And if, we, if we're gonna go this way because of seizure disorder, I would consider that life-threatening. And it's possible that we could amend that part by saying life-threatening medical conditions so that for things that aren't life-threatening, because medical marijuana is used for glaucoma, dementia, obstructive sleep apnea, we're probably not having a lot of kids in school with the CPAP machine on them. So it's very likely that if we tweak this, we can maybe fix that part of it. But again, this is, this is new ground. Thank you. And Senator Hall, did Madam you Chair, want to address the um, uh, cannabis in schools concern I'm, raised I'm by Senator Jensen? Uh, Mr. De La Forest to Mr. De La Forest? That. Madam Chair and Senator Jensen, thank you uh, for your questions. And I think he, he, what I would say in, in addressing the questions is that we must all acknowledge, of course, that there is some conflicts with federal law. So maybe as opposed to new ground, certainly there is conflicting ground. Uh, with Madam Chair, point of order. I'm, I'm sorry, Senator Jensen. Could you elaborate what those differences are between state and federal? You, you commented that there's conflicts with, I just don't understand that. So, Mr. De La Forest. Madam Chair, thank you. And Senator Jensen, what, what I mean by that is that uh, by nature, because of on the one hand, uh, federal law does uh, classify cannabis as a schedule one drug. And of course you have states, 34 of them that have said, we're gonna have nonetheless have a medical cannabis program. And then another eight states have said on top of that, we're gonna allow it on school grounds. Uh, you have that inherent conflict uh, that we just have to acknowledge that's out there. Uh, what's interesting about it is, is certainly that uh, I am not aware of any loss of licensure or arrest or loss of school funds in the other states that have uh, allowed cannabis on school grounds. So there is that issue. The other issue that's interesting to contemplate that's out there is it used to be a situation that the states that engaged in medical cannabis and the federal government had a bright line difference between the two. Well now, ironically, the federal government is sort of conflicting itself. And I can give you just one example of that, is that there is a burgeoning legal theory and a very real one that was recently tested in Illinois that says, uh, contrary to the federal government banning cannabis on school grounds under the IDEA Act of 1975, which deals with special education, that federal law compels the use of medical cannabis on school grounds for children who are duly enrolled. So we operate just inherently in this very chaotic world of conflict and, and, and really inertia, I think, on the part of the federal government. And, and it really comes down to, I think, Senator, if I could cut to the chase, it comes down to this idea that about five years ago, Minnesota joined 30, 33 other states and said, our sick and our dying citizens are not gonna wait for Washington. And I see a parallel with the school grounds issue where supporters like Senator Hall and others on a bipartisan basis, at least those who are supporting it right now, they are saying the same things while acknowledging uh, the flaws that you're raising and some of these conflicts and risks. They're very real, they're out there. But nonetheless, I, I don't wanna to presume to speak for those legislators, but I think they would say, the interest in not making sick and dying kids wait, or now in this case, suffer the inconveniences you heard from the witnesses. We just think that outweighs what happens with the feds. Okay. Thank you, Senator Nelson. Oh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Senator Hall. I appreciate you bringing this bill. Um, I would have suggested that the education piece be a piece all in of its own. Uh, I understand there's some issues uh, perhaps in the Ag Committee, certainly some health issues here, but um, as you've heard just briefly, there's a number of concerns that need to be addressed and ironed out in the Education Committee. I've heard from a number of uh, education um, leaders in different areas as well. I have some concerns as well, no matter how well intended. Uh, there is an issue about um, having um, 
uh, marijuana in our schools and brought into our schools even, uh, and I, I sympathize with the parents. I know if I was uh, a parent in that same situation, I'd be right up here testifying just that way. But uh, in my role as education uh, chair, I believe, uh, Madam Chair, that this bill needs to be re-referred to the K-12 system where we can have a full vetting uh, with all of the uh, education uh, in uh, folks who are involved about what uh, I'm sure your well-intended bill may or may not um, involve in its uh, implementation. So, Madam Chair, I would uh, like to move that uh, this bill be uh, re-referred to the Education Committee without recommendation. Um, Senator Nelson, are you making that motion now so that we could go for a vote? Uh, yes. Because you just, you, so without further debate. Well, if there's um, further members, we, I, did, we, I definitely want to have members have an opportunity um, I, to speak, I did, but at I that did point, have an, I would like to make that yeah, referral. I did have an annotation that um, the Education Committee had requested it, and so that was going to be our motion. So I didn't know that you were going to make that motion as part of your uh, statements and questions. Anything Madam Chair, further, I Senator will uh, remove that motion at this point. We certainly want to have full and as much discussion as needed here. Okay. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. Thank you. And now to Senator Madam Franzen. Chair, um, I'm sorry, Senator I wonder Huff. if uh, our testifier could uh, respond to the Senator. Uh, briefly, please. It seems to me from uh, uh, Senator Jensen and Senator Nelson, um, your concerns regarding this discussion are absolutely warranted. And they're deeply rooted in uh, the American medical tradition. I get that. But this is not groundbreaking. You can dispense morphine in school with a doctor's order. You can dispense Ritalin, which is uh, legal methamphetamine, okay? This stuff that our kids take, that our parents take, it actually doesn't look like marijuana. It is not identifiable as marijuana in any way, okay? In fact, I hate that word because I think it perpetuates our old-fashioned beliefs. However, we have all of the infrastructure to do this. It's not, it, it doesn't require further examination. If we can give Ritalin, if we can give morphine, then we should, if we can give insulin, which is deadly if you get it wrong, we should be able to give this. School nurses should be able to administer this. It is far less dangerous, and it's far less dangerous than a child having a seizure in an uncontrolled environment. Now, I understand that there are concerns regarding specifically the difference between certification and a physician's prescription, because in our current law, the physician is the certifier, okay? And then you actually don't take a prescription from that physician. That goes into a state database, it goes to these guys over here, and uh, then the pharmacist gives them the prescription. So it's a little weird, a little different in that regard. But it would be easy enough to then take that prescription back for a recheck appointment with your physician and have a physician write it on a prescription pad. We, we write some really strange stuff on prescription pads all the time. You know, no using your right hand. That's crazy, okay? So uh, is that a prescription? Like, can you go and fill yourself a prescription for two left hands? No, you can't. But we wrote it on a prescription so we have all of these, these uh, we have all of these systems to get around the difficult details of certification versus prescription. And I would also argue that under the Americans for Disabilities Act, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not my son's fault. He has seizures. No one in school wants to deal with them. They're not qualified to deal with them. Um, uh, he doesn't want to have one. It's extremely toxic to the brain. Um, I think it benefits everybody if we can control his seizures. You know. Um, and I would argue that that's our obligation under Americans with Disability. 
because it would be like saying, you can't have your insulin at school. Your mom has to quit her job and come give it to you. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. Thank come you. on. Doesn't that sound crazy? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Johnson. We do need to uh, get back to Senator questions.